Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name is Cameron and on today's episode, we're gonna be taking a look at the first bottle to come out of the brand new Augusta Distillery. This is their 13 year old cask strength Buckner's Single Barrel. All right, let me tell you, I am so excited about this review today. This is a bottle that has been getting a ton of hype and chatter and creating a ton of buzz in all of the online Facebook bourbon groups, both nationally and especially here in Columbus, Ohio. And that's because it just hit shelves about a week and a half ago. Now I've gotta say, I was really hesitant to pull the trigger on this one. And I'm honestly still hesitant that I did pull the trigger on this because it is a $200 bottle. Um, and I should probably say that a little softer because my fiance is in the other room, but 200 bucks as an MSRP is a pretty steep price, um, especially for the very first bottle to come out of a new distillery. Now, many people will shell out this kind of money and really untold hundreds of dollars on the secondary market for allocated Buffalo Trace products, you know, older E.H. Taylors, all this kind of stuff, or maybe, you know, 15 year MGP or whatever. But when they look at a really high MSRP, they, they get weird about it and they don't want anything to do with it. And vice versa, honestly, some people who think secondary is crazy love to see higher MSRPs because it's being perhaps a little bit more honest about the real value of some of these bottles so that the secondary markup doesn't happen as much. Wherever you stand on that, it doesn't matter. 200 bucks at the end of the day, that's a lot of money. <laughs> and so uh, it's enough to make anybody's palm sweat when you're standing there in the store contemplating whether you're gonna pick this thing up. So before we go any further, I just want to say I am going to talk a little bit extra at the beginning of this video. I do apologize. I'll try to edit it down and get through it as quickly as possible. But there's a lot to talk about here because it is totally brand new. The bottle, the distillery, everything. And I want to kind of provide enough background and context um, for the tasting so that everything kind of makes sense and flows together. But if you want to skip ahead to the tasting, I fully understand and I will put a timestamp in the description below. Um, but I think it's going to be worth the extra couple of minutes to kind of watch the video in its entirety. So let's talk about the distillery first here. I have their website pulled up in front of me on my computer down here. So if you see me looking down, that is what I'm doing. Uh, first and foremost, they have their mission statement in big bold letters. It is to create authentic curated bourbon centric experiences. So gotta love that. Um, they mention on here something uh, about marketing, basically. And this is kind of the big worry with this bottle is that it's a lot of marketing mumbo jumbo, you know, good age statement, all that kind of stuff, but that the actual liquid inside won't justify the price tag. They have in big bold letters, more than marketing, and then they go on to kind of talk about that. Funny enough, they kind of talk about it in marketing terms. <laughs> so I don't know if they if they intended to do that or not. Um, but the fact that they are saying that this is more than marketing at least makes me feel a little bit better having spent the money. They have all of their employees listed on the website, which is great. You can see who is actually behind this company and their titles. And then we move on to the actual distillery itself. They are in the process of completing this. It is slated to be done in the summer of 2021, so just a few months from now. And when it is completed, I'm definitely going to be making a trip down there. I'm very curious about this. It says they picked up a 35,000 square foot facility. It's a, it's a historical building that originally served as a carriage manufacturer. And now it's going to have their distillery there and they're gonna have places for tastings and all that kind of good stuff. So, you know, that's gonna be very exciting. Looks like a, a super cool old school building here in the town of Augusta, um, which is just across the Ohio-Kentucky border, just inside of Kentucky. So it's not too far from me. And like I said, I'll be I'll be sure to make a trip down there and check that out. Um, okay, so I think that's all we need to know about the distillery. Let's go ahead and move on to this bottle itself. I will say I've had about, I don't know, a pour and a half of this. I just picked the bottle up earlier today and now I'm recording this review. I didn't write any tasting notes down because with this being a new bottle, I don't really have any impressions of it. 
besides the fact that it's a high price tag and I'm keeping an open mind about that as well. So I really wanna hit this cold and, and see you know, what comes to mind here. I have an idea of the flavor profile in my head, but I don't have any bullet points or notes in front of me on my computer. And I just want all of you to know that this is off the cuff and my true and honest opinion about what this is. The bottle itself here, um, like I said, it's, it's a great age statement, 13 years. We can check that box. You know, this actually checks a lot of these boxes that we're all looking for. It's a single barrel product. It is cask strength and unfiltered. And the proof here is 121.9. The single barrels that they have chosen to use for this line of bottles, uh, it ranges between about 115 and 130. And I wanted to pick one up that was sort of in the middle of that proof range to give the best read, you know, overall on this. So 121.9 is just about smack dab in the middle of those numbers, uh, which is great. I guess the last thing that I could say is that Augusta Distillery is a non-distilling producer or NDP, meaning they are not distilling any of their own stuff yet. They are obviously in the process of finishing their distillery in that 35,000 square foot building. What that means as a non-distilling producer is that you have to buy barrels from other places and use other people's stuff until yours comes of age. And then that begs the question of where they are getting their stuff from. Where are the barrels coming from with this 13 year old cask strength bourbon, you know? Um, and the answer there lies in the mash bill. The mash bill is 74% corn, 18% rye, and 8% malted barley, 74, 18, 8. And if you know mash bills, you know that we are talking about Barton, uh, AKA 1792, which is in Bardstown, Kentucky. And they do mention that their stuff comes from Bardstown, Kentucky. Uh, that is the reason why we have 1792 foolproof on the drum today. Just a little, you know, relationship there. But I included two other NDP bottlings here. One is Sam Houston 14, which is, again, the same exact mash bill from Barton, just proof down to 98 proof and uh, 14 years old pretty closely related in terms of age. And also this is the Bardstown Discovery number one, which is 75% Barton uh, bourbon inside of it. And it's 11 and a half years, so not quite as old, but it's bottled at cask strength right around the same proof as the Augusta. So at the end of this video, after I taste through the Augusta, um, I'm then going to compare it to the Bardstown, see how they relate, and then finally I'll proof it down to match the Sam Houston or get close to it and see how those things relate. So that is the plan for the video. I apologize for the long windedness. Let's go ahead and get right to it now. And I've already got these poured out. We're going to start with the 13 year Buckner single barrel and see how this thing um, noses and tastes. So here we go. <sighs> wow, this, this is, two words. It is old and bold. And I know that is super freaking cheesy, but it is just so rich and heavy smell. It just, it's incredible. So I'm, I'm going to get back to it now. Yeah. Let's talk about the actual kind of caramel profile of this thing. There is a ton of molasses and brown sugar and very sticky, heavy syrupy type notes in here that kind of complement the really sort of dry and burnt caramel base of this bourbon. Uh, it, it's it's sweet, but it's also very dry on the nose. It's kind of what you want an older cask strength bourbon to smell like, if, you know, if I'm being honest with you. And nothing too bright here on the nose. Um, you know, the brightest note is sort of that banana note that Barton is known for, but when it gets to this age and at this proof, the banana note honestly doesn't resemble banana so much anymore. It actually kind of turns into like a furniture polish type note. And that kind of sits on the top of this pretty nicely though. Like it's not off putting in any way. And it really mingles well with some of the oaky woody undertones in here. Like I said, it's a dry nose. You can smell sort of this dry woodiness. There is this musty oak rickhouse funk going on in there, which is great. There's a little bit of leather. And then when you have that, that sort of top furniture polish note in there, it kind of ties everything together very nicely. Again, it smells very old 
and very just rich and heavy. Yeah, and I could honestly see a little bit of like, I could see a little bit of chocolate in here as well if you're kind of searching for it. There is a decent bit of ethanol. This is the neck pour of the bottle. It could just be that. But even if it is a little bit of ethanol, I'm, I'm kind of okay with it because it's really, really intense and, and so full of flavor and aroma that I, I don't mind it. Yeah, and the final thing I'll say is there's just a ton of spice going on in here. And I, I wanna drill down on that, but I'm gonna go ahead and taste it first before we talk about that um, in, in any more of a nerdy way than I already have. So let's check it out on the palate, cheers. Oh my goodness. Wow. So much flavor. Good Lord. <laughs> now, it is a little hot, I will say. Um, this thing is about 61% ABV, just, just under that. This is drinking more like 65, 66, 67, I would say. Um, I don't hate that. <clears throat> it kind of leaves you a little bit of room to water it down if you want, or God forbid you put this over ice, you know, at $200, I just kind of start to sweat when I think about that. But it's it's got a lot of room, you know, for you to kind of play around with it and dial it in. Or maybe it just needs a little bit more air. Like I said, it's a neck pour, so it might just be drinking hot for right now. Yeah, you come back to the nose and it gets a little bit sweeter after that first sip after your palate acclimates. Um, it really smacks you in the face. So I'm going to do a second sip here and see what I get now. Mm. Wow. The spice is so, so intense. There's a ton of pepper and cinnamon. And honestly, like, if you've ever had Dr. Pepper, there's sort of these strange spice notes that you can't really characterize as just baking spice, which we say on a lot of bourbons, or just cinnamon. It's got this Dr. Pepper spice in here that is very, very specific to this one. I'll be curious to put it next to the Bardstown and see how that compares. There's also a ton of dark cherry and dark fruits. The cherry really stands out quite a bit, but I could see like some dried out, you know, kind of like figs or plums or something underneath all of that. But besides those notes, there is, for me, there are no really like mid-range or bright fruit notes none of that. It is all really deep and heavy fruits. Deep and heavy fruits. What does that mean? I don't even know. A little tobacco now on the nose. The barrel char note is really starting to come out of there. It's just a lot of the stuff, I probably already said this, that you want in an older cask strength bourbon like this. Um, it's, it's, it's really, really good. <laughs> I, I wanted to not like this in a lot of ways because of the price tag, but I'm glad I do like it. I'm glad it I'm glad it's really starting to seem like, okay, this was a pretty good choice here. So let's have one final sip, think about the finish this time, and then we'll kind of move on to the comparisons here. Mm. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. I don't have a lot of complaints. Like, I'm going to be really curious to see how this develops with a little bit more air in the bottle. And as I get a chance to do some more side-by-sides with other you know, maybe similar products in terms of their sourcing, or maybe just similar in terms of proof and flavor profile and age. Either way, I can't wait to see how this thing develops because I'm really, really excited about it right now. There are a couple things that I would change. That ethanol, you could dial back five to 10%. There's a little bit of a bitterness in here going into the finish right now, which is a crazy long finish. I've got to give them that but there's a little bit of bitter woodiness and bitter barrel char that's going on, and it's a little bit unpleasant. So I would love if that would mellow out with a little bit more time and more air. But those are really the only two complaints that I have. If you want something that is intense, and I mean really, really intense, and in your face, full of dark flavors, there's nothing that's like, ah, refreshing about this. You're not gonna drink this on a summer day. This is for those cold fall or winter nights um, when you want something that's just gonna kind of warm you from the inside out, and that is what this bourbon is. I don't wanna kind of talk about value just yet, but I'll say that I am not totally offended by the price tag right now. Like the way that this is shaped up, 
by itself without any comparisons yet, which could totally change the ball game. I'm pretty stoked about this. So let's go ahead and move on now. Like I said, the next comparison I want to do is with this Bardstown Discovery Series 1. And this is 75% Barton juice, 11 years and seven months old. So it is just, you know, a little bit shy of the 13 year old age of this Augusta bottling, but that's okay. Let's see how these things compare. And again, we're talking a $70 difference in MSRP right now. All right, so as I smell the Bardstown, definite similarity in here. The Barton characteristics come through on both of these loud and clear. Um, it seems to me that the Bardstown is a little bit lighter. And in terms of proof, it is uh, almost the exact same proof. It's like three tenths of a percent lower than the uh, than the Augusta bottling. So I'm for all intents and purposes, I'm just going to say that these are the same proof right now. Yeah, let's put it next to the Augusta. Whoa, okay. Okay, so the Bardstown is a little bit more balanced from kind of top to bottom of like a <laughs> like a flavor pyramid. I kind of talk about that sometimes, you know. At the top, you have like all, all your tingly rye spice, green apple, and at the bottom, you have all your oak, and in the middle, you go from, you know, light to dark, basically. Um, the Bardstown has a little bit more of a completed pyramid, I would say, of flavors. Whereas the Augusta is just all of that foundation. It's all of that dark, heavy richness. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer here. It's just kind of what you're in the mood for. The Bardstown is maybe more generally approachable, whereas the this Buckner single barrel is for... It's not for the faint of heart. It's for someone who wants something really, really intense. Yeah, because in the Bardstown, you get a little more rye spice, a little bit more citrus and orange maybe a slight bit of, of nuttiness going on, and maybe even a little bit of green apple that kind of sits on the top. And then obviously underneath that, you get a lot of the similar Barton characteristics. But when you go back to the Augusta, oh my God, it like the Dr. Pepper thing is so real. <laughs> like when you put these side by side, the Augusta has that Dr. Pepper spice that is so in your face, but it also is bitter. There is some... Like that bitterness is definitely coming through now when you do this comparison, but if you have it by your by itself, it's not quite as obvious. All right, let's taste the Bardstown just very quickly. Yeah, the Bardstown has a little bit more, obviously more brightness, like I mentioned, but the development comes in waves of light and dark in your palate. Which, which is nice. Like I said, it's a little bit more balanced. But when you go to the Augusta, the Augusta is just like almost more one-dimensional in its development where it just crescendos with a very consistent flavor profile the entire time, whereas the Bardstown has those waves. There's not a right or wrong answer here. The Bardstown's pricing reflects more of a generalized product that's going to appeal to a wider market and a wider audience. The Buckner single barrel pricing here sort of might reflect the fact that it's a more specialty product, a little bit more curated, more of an individualistic flavor profile. So I could see this going both ways. Um, so the final thing that I'm going to do is proof down this Augusta to kind of match the proof perhaps of a Sam Houston 14 and see how those compare. All right, so good little bit of water in there. Give it a little swirly swirl. Let's smell the Sam Houston. Oh yeah, the Sam Houston's pretty tame, pretty cherry, like kind of bright cherry forward, bright banana forward, almost more like an old Forrester product, especially in this lineup, right? Because the proof is so much lower, but it's it still a really great amount of like oak and funkiness and leather. All right, and now to the Proof Down Augusta. The Augusta sweetens up a little bit, but it's, it maintains that dark richness. It doesn't it doesn't brighten up to the point that the Sam Houston has or or is, you know, naturally. Let's try the Sam Houston. Almost tastes like water and like candy or water now compared to these others. Yeah, and the spice on the Sam Houston is so much more tame and reserved compared to this. All right, let's try this version Proof Down now. The Augusta almost loses a little bit of its interest when you proof it down this far. So 
fundamentally, these are very different barrels that have been used here, it seems like, you know, and a lot of that could have to do with the fact that the Sam Houston is a blend of three different barrels, where the Augusta is a single barrel. But they are fundamentally different products. And I would say the Sam Houston is a great choice for someone who wants that lower proof, <clears throat> that aged bourbon experience at a lower proof. The Bardstown is a really great all around type thing. I know this is Discovery One, but all of the discoveries are so good. This number one definitely has the light and dark coming in waves. And finally, the Augusta, very specific, very dark and heavy, a little bit on the bitter side and on the alcohol forward side, but an incredible representation of what an old and bold bourbon can and probably should be. So let's wrap this up now. For 200 bucks, it's an expensive bourbon. Other things similar to this, Blue Run, that's some source juice, like 170. Cream of Kentucky at like 150. I believe that's Barton juice as well. Um, you know, the, these older sourced Barton bottlings are not cheap. This might be one of the most expensive versions of that, but it's good. And compared to some of these others, because these others are expensive, I think that this, while it might not be worth 200, if you put them next to each other with their associated price tags, this thing might be around that 170, 180 mark and it might earn it. So I've got to say, I I feel like I've been proven wrong on this one. This could change and get worse and funkier over time with more air or it could get significantly better. But where it stands right now with the neck pour, I don't think I'm going to run out and buy another one, but I'm actually pretty glad I have this bottle. So walk don't run to grab one of these you know and don't grab more than one at a time but i wouldn't hesitate and feel like you're getting ripped off because if you want something that's really high proof really old very intense this is a this is a great option for you so that's all i've got for this video thank you so much for watching if you liked this video i know it was probably pretty long a little long-winded i do apologize i have some other videos coming out right now quick sips and some other things that are shorter formats. So check those out if you hated this, that's okay. Um, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification to find out when I'm going live and when new stuff is coming out. Uh, drop me a line in the comments below or at drumsanddrams at gmail.com if you have any suggestions or things you'd like me to review. Um, and otherwise, I think that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I'm gonna go ahead and end with this slightly proofed down version of Augusta Distillery's Buckner's 13-year-old cask strength single barrel. So cheers to all of you, and I'll see you next time here on Drums and Drams.